So first of all, the problem with this question is that, you know, when you say men and I, it can mean many different things. If you say Amish, you have a pretty clear picture of what you mean. You mean you know, someone <laughs> with plain clothes, a beard or a prayer covering on their head, uh, using a horse and buggy, using very low or restricted levels of technology. When you say Mennonite, now that can mean a variety of types of people. You can be anything from a very, let's say, modern person who uses computer, the internet, cars, and would be indistinguishable visually from you know most other Americans. Mennonite can also be someone who also uses a horse and buggy as their primary transportation, that also wears plain clothing, that also speaks Pennsylvania German, uh, that also uses restricted technology, has you know, a lot of things in common with the Amish. There's a lot of range in the churches that use the word Mennonite to describe themselves. So the Amish and Mennonites, uh, so a couple other groups, the Hutterites, they all share a similar history. They come from a group known as the Anabaptists. Amish Mennonites both come from that background. In their course of their history, there was a, a division and you had a certain group of followers that followed the leader Jacob Amon, eventually became known as the Amish. Okay, and they were the kind of the more plain and more traditional groups there. And so over time, you've had, even within the Amish groups that have become more modern and progressive, some churches that have eventually become, you know, car driving churches. In contrast to that, you have the uh, old order pathway. When we talk about the Amish today, we talk about the old order Amish. So the further you get away in those terms, the fewer similarities that Mennonites would have with Old Order Amish. So the groups that are most similar to the Amish within the Mennonites would be the Old Order Mennonites, and also you could include the Old Colony Mennonites. So the Old Order Mennonites, a significantly smaller group than uh, the Amish, but you'll find them living side by side, you know, just as neighbors basically, uh, with the Amish in certain uh, communities. One would be Lancaster County. There's a very large Old Order Mennonite community there. So you'll see the Amish and Mennonite, Old Order Mennonites living side by side in some places. They also wear plain clothing, though it's a different style than the Amish. The women wear head coverings, prayer coverings. They use the horse and buggy, uh, drive similar buggies to the Amish. The Old Order Mennonite buggies will be a different style in Lancaster County. You can tell it's an Amish buggy by its color. It's a gray color. And then the Mennonite buggies there would be black, kind of a little bit different design. They also use restricted levels of technology. The older Mennonites also speak Pennsylvania German as well, so the Amish and the Mennonites have that in common. The older Mennonites also cooperate with the Amish in certain ways. They're culturally close to one another, so uh, you may have things like uh, joint auctions. Certain schoolhouses in Lancaster County are essentially joint Amish and Mennonite schools. So you'll have children that are Amish and then also plain Mennonites attending those schools. And there's maybe horse and buggy Mennonites. There are also some uh, conservative Mennonites, uh, like black bumper Mennonites is uh, the name of one group. And some of those children may also attend those schools. You even have some shared uh, cultural aspects in, in forms of recreation. Now, specifically, there is a game called Cornerball. Uh, that's a game that I had a chance to witness uh, on one occasion. And it's basically kind of like a game of dodgeball, where you have two teams and they try to hit one another with kind of like a hard ball. I hear the ball can hurt pretty <laughs> pretty badly if you get hit. And it was uh, Amish teams versus Mennonite teams. And there was you know, quite a few spectators there, both Amish and Mennonite. Even some older people that came out to, to watch this game. There are, while there are similarities, there are differences. Uh, I already mentioned that, you know, they do wear plain clothing and it's just, it's a different style, okay, different buggies. So the older Mennonite men do not grow facial hair. And the Amish men do grow the beard. And they see there's a biblical basis for that. Another one would be the place of worship. Uh, now the old older Mennonites will worship in a meeting house, so a specially built structure, specially made for worship. Most Amish will worship in the home. It could be in the basement of the home, they have their church gathering there, or in a uh, workshop or another building, even the barn. Another difference there would be the church structure. Amish church district, which typically is made up of about 25 to 35 families, somewhere around 150 people total. Each district will have typically its own bishop, uh, ministers, and a deacon. 
Uh, within the Old Order of Mennonites, they have a lot fewer bishops. So you have more authority vested in fewer people uh, in the Old Order of Mennonite uh, churches. So there, those are some of the differences there, um, but they tend to be culturally quite alike. So, you know, you'll see the Amish and the Mennonites, as I mentioned, cooperating on different things, and they're going to be able to relate to each other on the same level. They have a shared history. They have shared faith, essentially. Now, the old colony Mennonites are a group that are primarily found in Mexico. Uh, they're found in Belize. Uh, some are located in Canada. There are even a few in the United States, some in other Latin American countries, but the bulk of them would be in, in Mexico. This is a group which also uses highly restricted technology. You know, they have differences in their style of plain clothing. They don't wear beards either. Some of the old colony Mennonites do permit and use automobiles, although some do use horse-drawn transport. So they also speak a different dialect of German. They often live in significant poverty as well. And there's been an interesting project where Amish uh, from states like Ohio, Pennsylvania, other places, have been going down to Mexico to help teach in old colony Mennonite schools there. There's been a long tradition of Amish doing that now for over two decades. So Old Order Mennonites, Old Colony Mennonites, these are two groups that have similarities with the Amish culturally and also I would say probably mentality as well. So when you, when you ask the question, what's the difference between the Amish and the Mennonites, I would say, well, what group of Mennonites are you talking about, right? The, the, the plainer the Mennonites, you know, they're, they're more similar to the Amish, okay? Even, uh, even in the very ways they live, but even some of the more conservative Mennonites that are car driving, would feel like an affinity or a closeness to one another and kind of a cultural uh, similarity, even though one would drive a car, they may still dress in plainer clothing and have you know, plainer ways. Uh, the number of those similarities would um, increase kind of the plainer the Mennonite group becomes. They're progressive Amish, there are more conservative Amish. The range within Mennonites is even greater in terms of, you know, you have all the way from horse and buggy driving Mennonites all the way to modern car driving, uh, professional people. You have university professors that are Mennonites. You have doctors that are Mennonites. That's another difference there that the more progressive Mennonites will have a higher you know, level of education. They permit a higher level of education, which uh, the Amish don't do that, right? They stop at in eighth grade. I hope that answers that question. I do two videos per week. If you haven't already, just hit the subscribe button and that will keep you in the loop. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.